Imagine driving down the road and navigating to your destination by looking at the street signs. So to do this, your brain needs to encode uh, information that's coming at you through your senses and changing very rapidly from instant to instant. So down to a temporal scale of, say, ten, even tens of milliseconds. At the same time, uh, your brain also needs to uh, process and maintain this information over a much longer time, such that those that you typically need to make and implement the decisions about where to go, and this can easily take seconds. So, but how does the brain do this? How does it bridge this gap between time scales? So, people have uh, proposed the existence of a hierarchy of um, uh, temporal scales of information processing across different brain areas. Um, so. Uh, what we wanted to do with this project was to uh, look at the neural representations of sensory stimuli and behavioral decisions across different cortical areas engaged by the same uh, behavioral tasks. So this is the experiment that we designed. There is a mouse which is running down a corridor as, and as the mouse is running, there is a sound which is played either on the left or on the right of the head of the animal. At some point, the corridor branches and the mouse needs to decide whether to go left or right depending on the direction of the sound it just heard. As the mouse is doing this, we're recording from populations of neurons in two different brain areas. One is auditory cortex, a sensory area obviously related to the type of task. The other one is posterior parietal cortex, a higher association area related to motor planning and decision making. So if we focus on the representation of the upcoming behavioral choice of the animal, uh, in terms of uh, individual neurons, uh, the two areas look fairly similar. Uh, indeed, in both areas, individual neurons encode for the upcoming choice of the animal, uh, but they do so very shortly, very transiently in time. Um, on temporal scales, they are too, likely too short to be directly relevant uh, for behavior. On the other hand, there, we found a striking difference between the two areas in terms of what happens at the level of population activity. Indeed, uh, in um, posterior parietal cortex, uh, neurons are high reco highly correlated between each other, such that it is possible to take the short-lived and transient activity of individual cells firing one after the other and piece them together to form long-lived, consistent representations of the upcoming choice of the animal on temporal scales that are compatible with the duration of the whole uh, behavioral task. This, uh, by contrast, doesn't happen in auditory cortex. Indeed, uh, even though uh, individual neurons in auditory cortex do encode for the choice and they do fire one after the other, they do so uh, incoherently, so, so that, uh, because they're not correlated, so that it is impossible to construct a long-lived representation of the choice uh, by looking at many of them. Um, so, uh, to conclude, uh, what we have done with this project is to show that uh, there are differences in the patterns of collective activity uh, across different cortical areas engaged by the same behavioral task, and that these differences give rise to different neural codes that can encode and process information of diff on different temporal scales. Thanks for listening.